Hello, 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 everyone. My name is Duchess, and this is Duchess Discussions, <clears throat> where we talk about true crime and missing cases. And today, we are going to be doing a special live on a case that someone reached out to me to cover. And this is an FBI endangered missing case that is 20 years old. And this is the case of Tabitha Tudors. I want to welcome everyone to the chat. Thank you so much for being here for this live stream. We are going to talk about this very intense case, just reading over all of this information that I've taken in over the last few days has really been overwhelming in this case. And I can understand why this case um, is so complex. And I have asked my research team to come on panel if they would like to discuss this because there's a lot of red flags that popped out at me. And I just wonder, why did Tabitha Tudor's case grow cold? What caused the case to not be solved? And we're going to take a look at those details tonight. And I want to hear from you guys in the chat. What are your thoughts? Are you familiar with the case of Tabitha Tudor's? Let me know in the chat. I want to hear from you. We're going to bring up Arctic Fox True Crime to the panel. Hello, Arctic. How are you, sir? I am doing good. How are you? I am doing. I'm doing for a Monday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for a Monday. It's, it's Monday, everybody. So I just want to say hey to everybody in the chat. Mods, thank you so much for being here. I want to say hello to all of my members. Of course, Arctic is a mod and a member. So thank and thank you for being here on panel. He's part of my research team. And Arctic has been busting out some videos today. You have been working hard. Laurie, thank you for being here. I'm so glad that you're 16. 16? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that is a lot. Working hard. If you guys are not subbed up to Arctic Fox, you need to get over there and sub up. So we got Laurie in the chat. Thank you for coming over, Laurie. We've got Kara L in the house. Wonderful moderator. Thank you for being here. We got Michelle Macklin, who's also on the research team. Maybe Michelle will come up and join us if she wants to. Thank you for being here, Michelle. Um, we've got Bag Lady in the chat. Hey, Bag Lady. I'm so glad to see you again. Welcome back. Um, thanks for being here. And we've got Crimes Have Consequences. Hey, love. Hope you're doing good. If Crimes, if you want to come and join us on panel, please feel free to do so. You're welcome to do that. She's also an intricate part of our mod squad member and research team. Uh, we've got Kim Holmes here. Hey, Kim. So good to see you. Thanks for being here. Hey, Nightbot. No, I hope you've been behaving lately. So I want to see good things tonight from you. Hey, special needs mom. I'm so glad that you joined us. Nashville is where you live. So you're probably familiar with this case. I'm glad to know that. Thank you. And we got Funny Face Brenda. Hey, so, so glad to see you. Who else have we got here? Wait, what is in the chat? Thank you for being here. So glad to see you. Welcome, everyone. So we are just going to uh, let a few people come in. Arctic, just um, from where we talked in our research chat about this case, um, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions on this case. I think people there are going are. to be really interested. Um, one of the uh, links that I have uh, for my mods to drop is um, Tabitha is listed on the most wanted FBI list. And I want to start out by taking a look at that screen so that we can uh, get right into it. So if you guys can take a look here, we have 
Tabitha Tudors, Tabitha Danielle Tudors. And Tabitha went missing on April 29th of 2003 from Nashville, Tennessee. And as you can see, they actually have their own missing flyer out. And this is a photo age progressed to 19 years. So in other words, 19 years from her age, which was 13 years old when she went missing. Hey, Annabella and Aurora. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Missy Noor. Just wanted to say a quick hello. So glad to see you guys. So um, I think it's so wonderful what they are able to do with technology today, Arctic, to be able to photo age progress these pictures. These guys are literally watching these kids grow up on the web with this technology. Now, Tabitha would be approximately... It's amazing these aggressions and they're yes. fine, the child. Yes. And Tabitha would be approximately, yes. I believe, 30, 32 years old now. Well, her birthday, I think, is February. So she, I think she'll be 32 this year. Is that correct? Am I doing my, am I, is my math mathing? So she was born February 15th of 1990, born in Nashville, Tennessee. She has sandy blonde hair and blue eyes. She was five feet, one inches tall at the time of her disappearance. And remember, she was 13 years old. She'll be 33 in February. Thank you, special needs mom. See, math ain't math in today. It's Monday. So she was 32. I was thinking correctly that she was already 32. So, um, and she would have been about 100 pounds at the time of her disappearance. Um, of course, she is a white female, and the FBI is offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to the recovery of Tabitha Tudors and the prosecution of the person responsible for her disappearance. Now, Tabitha has a birthmark on her abdomen area. She has a scar on her finger, and both of her ears are pierced. So I wanted you guys to be able to see uh, this FBI poster here. And here we have some of the information. Now, there's not a lot of information here on this particular FBI uh, website. But we can hop over here to the Charlie Project. And the Charlie Project is such a phenomenal organization uh, that has a load of missing people and their information out there, especially cold cases. In fact, Amber Ray Johnson, we were able to get her on the Charlie Project finally, which was such a success. So here you can see the many faces of Tabitha Danielle Tudors right here. Looks like it's not going to let me enlarge that, is it? I was hoping it would let me blow it up. Um, just going to get over here to the Charlie Project so I can let you guys know the information that the Charlie Project has on Tabitha Tudors. Uh, it does actually give a description of clothing and jewelry. She was wearing a light blue shirt, mud jeans, and Reebok sneakers. She does have a fair and freckled complexion, as you can see here in these pictures. Can everyone see this in the chat, Will? Now, the details of her disappearance are very interesting, and we're going to get into that right now. 
And as you can see here, Tabitha was last seen by her family at approximately seven in the morning on April the 29th of 2003, when her father woke up in their home at the 1300 block of Lillian Street in Nashville, Tennessee. She was watching television when he went to work. Now, from what I understand, Arctic, from some other articles that we read, Tabitha had kind of a routine. She, as a child, I guess, um, slept in her parents' room. And when she became older, her parents obviously uh, didn't want her to sleep in the bed, but they never told Tabitha, like, you can't come and sleep in this room. And, you know, because it was kind of like her safe place. So what Tabitha would do was if she at any time felt anxiety or any types of feelings like that in the night, she would come and make a pallet on the floor of her parents' bedroom. And so from what I understand, she had slept in her parents' bedroom, I believe, that night. So therefore, she was up, you know, that's why the, the dad was able to see her because she was, you know, she was up, get, you know, getting ready for school. But that was that was something that Tabitha did. Um, she was supposed to board the school bus at 8 a.m. at 14th and Boscobel Streets. Boscobel is actually one street over from Lillian and they run parallel. Um, 14th is the cross street. So that's where that bus stop would have been. And witnesses did see her walking in that direction. She was reading some papers as she walked, and she didn't appear to be in a hurry or looking for anyone. And Tabitha did not get on the bus and never arrived at Bailey Middle School two miles away. Her parents contacted the school that evening when she failed to return home. They found out she had been absent from school that day that they reported her missing shortly before 6 p.m. on the 29th. I think I hear somebody in my backstage. No. Nope. Is that you, Arctic? Oh, Arctic must have fell down. Um, so I thought that was very interesting because her mother is employed by the Metro school system um, but I think she works in the cafeteria and not at the same school. Yeah. It seems like if, you know, the other thing that I found out about her, which it does go on to say here, um, she doesn't have a history as being a runaway and her parents cannot think of any reason why she would want to leave her home. She was which, a straight A student and had a perfect attendance record. Which is why it makes me so angry that cops initially took her disappearance as a runaway situation instead of an abduction. Which is something we talked about in our research meeting yesterday. The first 48 hours are critical in a missing persons case. The first, the first six to eight hours are the most critical. But when you start getting further out from that 24 to 48 hour period, and you're looking in a direction that is really not the situation. She could be anywhere. Think about what, how far someone could travel if she had been trafficked or something like yeah. that, you know? And, and I believe we'll get into that later because there have been some possible sightings of her. And there were two, right. two sightings of her in the same location, which I think... Holds a lot of merit. So they, yes. were, they were, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, so this really kind of sets the scene that, you know, she has perfect attendance. She's a straight A student. She's also active in the choir at Eastland Baptist Church. And there was no evidence that she had a boyfriend. However, there's some other information that came forward that really kind of had some flags up that I'm not convinced about every scenario, how this is, this is pictured out, which is why it's really good to have a discussion group to see if other people see the same things, because 
fresh eyes on a case always help you to always have an open mind, you know, about those things. Now, this was the other interesting piece, Arctic, was she was supposed to go to Six Flags of America, an Absolutely. amusement park in, in Louisville, Kentucky, two weeks after she disappeared. And she was very excited about the trip. And for someone that's planning to run away or that that's not what we're expecting to hear. You know, she's looking forward to something. So oh, yeah. and, and they're not going to leave all their possessions behind when they run away either. Right. And she did leave all of her possessions, her clothes, her makeup and even twenty dollars in cash was found in her room. Now, if you're planning to run away, it just seems like you would want to take some of that with you. And it does go on to say that authorities initially treated Tabitha as a runaway due to her age, but they now believe she was abducted. Her parents and two adult siblings were all investigated and none are being called suspects in her disappearance. Now, this is where it, it takes a turn as we get into this information, Arctic, because a neighborhood boy told police that he saw Tabitha get into a red car with a man on the morning of her disappearance. And he described the driver as an African-American aged 30 to 40 wearing a baseball cap. And the witness stated once Tabitha was inside the vehicle, it reversed course and headed back up the hill. Now, this yeah. boy's story has not been confirmed, and some investigators have doubted his credibility. But tracker dogs traced Tabitha's scent along a route similar to the one that was described by this neighborhood boy. And the dogs eventually traced her scent into an alley, a place Tabitha's friends say she would have never gone to alone. Yeah, which I don't know why they're doubting the credibility when the dogs trace a similar route. That just doesn't make any sense to me either. Yeah. And this is where it gets, this is where I got really, I got <laughs> frustrated because the very next piece of information in this case is that Tabitha's sister, who, by the way, there are two adult children a boy and a girl, and the sister of Tabitha, the older sister, her former boyfriend matched the description of the driver, and he drove a red car, and he knew where and when Tabitha took the bus to school each morning, but police said they were never able to connect him to her disappearance. Yeah. And even the parents say that she wouldn't have willingly gotten into a car with anyone other than family. And, you know, if this was a former boyfriend, it may have been someone that she felt safe getting into the car with. Right. Because according to the boy, like, obviously he didn't say like, well, she looked scared or she tried to get away. No, she got into the car. So yeah. that lets me know that it was somebody that she was familiar with. Wouldn't she have been familiar with the sister's former boyfriend? Well, you would hope. So that was kind of a red flag for me. And then we get on down to another piece of information. Betty Jo, she went missing April 29th of 2003 in Nashville, Tennessee. And yeah, funny face, Brenda says, her per her parents, she was to continue to the Lil, to Lillian bus stop only if no one was at Biscoble, which I thought was weird because she lives on Lillian. So we're going to get into that because I want you guys to see on Google Earth where she lives in accordance to 14th Street and how far that actually is from the school. It is like not even two miles. It's like 1.4 miles to the school. 
And if you take the Scoble the opposite way from towards the school, it actually did ends into the Cumberland River. So if he was turned around and went the opposite way, the opposite way would take them to the Cumberland River. Mm -hmm. That is what concerns me. No, they don't live on Boscobel. They live on Lillian. Lily, Boscobel is actually a road that runs parallel, and it's one road over. And I'm going to show you guys that on a map. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about just a few of these things, and then I'm going to show you a map of that area, and you'll be able to see. And I'll show you. Um, the second piece of information that came up when we were looking into this was. This piece of paper, when investigators came to the house, they wanted to look in Tabitha's room. They wanted to collect some DNA and get some evidence. And there was a piece of paper found in Tabitha's room. Um, and it reads in Tabitha's handwriting, TDT, the initials, the letter N, and then the initials MTL. Now, TDT that's Tabitha's initials, Tabitha Danielle Tudors. But the initials of the other person are unknown. And it was thought and said by investigators that she was not known to have a boyfriend. I kind of so, want to know what the sister's ex-boyfriend's initials are. <laughs> that would be interesting. I thought, well, you know, if it was somebody at school, they could have went through the, the annual that year and looked to see whose initials were MTL. But I just thought that was really interesting because that says to me, TDT and MTL. That's like they're going together, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So maybe they didn't know as much about Tabitha as they thought they did. Yes, she was 13. Um, now, here's where it gets. This is the other red flag. It makes me want to go over there and play my little Steve Harvey. I'm going to have to go up there and do that on my stream yard. <laughs> um, there was a business card in her room with Tabitha's name, address, phone number, and the notations on it, call me and sexy girl. And the latter of which was crossed out, the sexy girl part was crossed out and was rewritten as ghetto girl. And this card, it says, turned out to have been given Tabitha by a friend, though, and said that it had no connection to her disappearance. Now, in my mind, I, um, that sounds like trafficking to me. <laughs> well, it, it, that was the first thing that came to my mind what is this 13 year old doing with a business card with something on there with her personal information and these notations on there yeah it, it's definitely concerning and I want to know how they were able to so easily rule it out as connected to her disappearance I know it's so interesting like it you know they have searched the logs of computers at the local public library they have said to have uh, went into internet chat rooms. They did not turn up any information. Now, there was, um, and I see Ronald, I see you in the chat. Thank you for being here. He thought that Albert Franklin was a suspect in Tabitha Danielle Tudor's kidnapping. That is not completely true. Albert Franklin is an SO in that area, and he has a lot of charges on him, as we saw in our research group. Um, a lot. He is not yeah. a good person. And he lives right up the street from her. Um, and this is likely the piece of information they're speaking about in this part right here. A man who was arrested for trying to lure an 11 year old girl into his car four months after Tabitha's disappearance was looked into as a person of interest in her case because of the nature of the crime he is charged with and because the alleged incident happened just a few blocks from Tabitha's home. 
but there is no evidence connecting the man and Tabitha. However, he was eventually taken off the suspect list. Which bothers me because there is a lot of SOs in that area. And we're going to look at that also. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give you guys like the scope of the story. And then we're going to talk about some of these things. Yes. Yes, Brenda, for sure. So once, you know, they looked into this particular part of the story and they couldn't match anybody up, I guess. I feel like if you've tried to lure another 11 year old girl, that would definitely be the first place I would be looking. But they yeah. couldn't link him. So the next, uh, well, I guess it was that October, a trucker reported a possible sighting of Tabitha from Linton, Indiana. Now, Arctic, this is what we were talking about. This, mm -hmm. they, there are people that have spotted this girl in other places. Yeah, because it wasn't just the trucker. It was also a person that worked at, a, I believe it was a hotel. Mm -hmm. that, that saw right. someone accompanied, a man accompanying a girl that resembled Tabitha as well as another girl. Yes, another teenage girl. And Tabitha seemed to be anxious and afraid. And the after he saw that, then later he saw a missing person's flyer of Tabitha and he realized that she resembled the girl that he had seen and he called police. And that's also when a hotel clerk in Linton, Indiana, um, saw the same thing and they reported it also. But these sightings have not been confirmed. Why? Did they not contact Linton, Indiana Police Department and possibly try to coordinate some type of search in this case? You know, if it had just been one witness and Linton calling in, I could see the police saying, okay, well, we checked it out, but we don't think it's anything. But when you've got two people, individual of each other, calling and reporting the same thing, that takes that that's credible in my opinion. Exactly. I believe so. And so then, you know, almost five months after Tabitha disappeared, an 11 year old girl named Heaven Ross disappeared while on her way to school in Northport, Alabama. Her remains were found in Holt, Alabama, three years after her disappearance, and her murder remains unsolved. There's also another girl that is was linked to, they thought at one time, Tabitha Heaven Ross, and I do believe I shared her name. Let me get over here to the Discord Um to pull up what her name was. And I think she was in Macon, Georgia, 11 years old, same, same circumstances, went missing in the morning hours from near their home and never the murder, you know, remains unsolved. It's just, it's crazy cases like this. It and is. Are they linked? It's, it's hard to say. You know, this is one where I feel like law enforcement just completely dropped the ball in the beginning. Had they taken it as an abduction case from the get go, instead of doing what they like to do way too often and just stamp every missing kid over the age of 12 as a runaway, we might be closer to finding Tabitha. She might have been home by now. That's right. Yes. It's right, Michelle. Tennessee shares a border with Alabama and Georgia, and both of those places would have been easy to get to from Nashville. Yes. Hey, Jason, thanks for being here. So that this 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 case is just it's so curious. It's so curious. Um, I'm going to see if I can I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a minute. I'm going to try to pull up my Google Earth because I want you guys to. Look at what we looked at today, um, because it was very interesting. I had to really, um, I had to really look at that in detail to have an understanding of what the layout of these streets were, 
And we, you know, we were able to find an alley that was near there, which since that time has actually been turned into a road. What was once this little dead end alleyway has actually been extended. And now they're they're building new houses, you know, all in this area. So what it looks like today is probably not what it looked like back in 2003. But it is very curious to take a look to see the approximation of where the river is, to see where the school is. It kind of really puts things in perspective. And all of my people in the chat that's in Tennessee, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So let's get over here and take a look at that map because I think it'll kind of, well, Betty Jo, I agree. Law enforcement has... I really can't say what what it is they're they they've done. I mean, it says that they have vetted this information, um, but here we're taking a look here in in Nashville, and here we have have Lillian Street right here. So if you've got a house right here, this is Fourteenth Street here at the top. So now I think we said Bashobel was this way. I believe this is it right here, which we can put that in. But I think that so you run the bus stop is supposed to be right here at this area right here. You've got this, I don't know, you've got this store here. So, you know, you've, it, this, is, this is what you're dealing with, these streets. Now, see, Lillian is here, but Lillian also, you know, you get on 14th, but then you can still go on this other street, and that's still a continuation of Lillian. The streets don't always, you can't just cross straight across to continue on the street, but it is the same street. So let's look up... Um, Which, again, if you go down Boshobel, you, you would go onto this street right here. That continues to be Boshobel. So it was actually, instead of right there, see, there's Lillian right here, because there's her house. Yeah. So it was actually this way. I was on the wrong side. So so this is Boshobel right here. So this would have been where the bus stop would be, 14th and Boshobel. Now, if we put in Bailey Middle School, which I had to map it on my Google Maps earlier. Um There's Bailey Middle. But it's closed. I don't guess it's Bailey Middle anymore. I don't know. Is that still the middle school there? Maybe it is. Right here? No, that's a Chase Bank. That's where it says that the middle school is. But, you know... The, the, the schools, they might have closed it. I mean, but it's not that far. It's not that far. I think I, I when I calculated, it was 1.4 miles from the middle school to her house. But if he didn't go towards the school and he went the opposite way, it would have taken them to 
the Cumberland River. That's what concerns me about it. Let's go back over to Bosch Oval. Because look, y'all, the river is right there. I mean, it just takes one little turn to drive all the way down here, and here you are into this warehouse area. I just want to know if they've ever searched in those areas. If they've ever done a water search. I mean, these are just questions that I have. I see they got a disc golf course down here. I mean, there's there's nobody down on this end. I mean, it's just a straight shot from her neighborhood down to the Cumberland River if you go the opposite way from the school. But I've never heard anybody talk about any of that um, in any of the reports that they have ever searched the water or searched other places. I haven't Betty either. Says, I'm half blind and water is every second. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know they had the dogs out searching, but I don't know if they ever went and actually put divers in that river and did the sonar and stuff like we see them doing almost every case today. Because we gotta remember this is a long time ago. Right. And they they do cases a lot different today than they did back then. Yeah. And Ronald says, yes, it was a red car, but did Tabitha get in it or was it she pulled in it by the suspects? Well, according to the witness, she got in willingly, which made us believe that maybe she was familiar with the person that was driving it. And I think that's kind of why we were concerned when I, when I found out that the sister's former boyfriend matched his description <laughs> and also had a red car, well, she would have been familiar with him, possibly. Mm -hmm. So he might have said, hey, if you hop in, I'll just give you a ride to school. But what happened from there? You know, but he was cleared. So, you know, it's just a lot of questions. A, a, a lot of questions that I have because I just feel like there's there's several red flags and I just have to ask myself, why did this case go cold? I do have a video was put out in April of last year and this was the last video that was done by, uh, an, by the news um, on her 19 year, you know, disappearance. Um, and so I thought we might take a look at that video. Let's see here if I can expand this video out here. Arctic, you may have to mute out. I think I'm gonna have to go over here and make sure I'm sharing my, my, uh, my sound, because I'm not sure if I'm sharing my sound. Okay. Four, I know All right, here we go. For 19 years, even grabbing the attention of the country, a team walking towards school bus stop vanishes. Welcome, Welcome back, back to New Swift 4. I'm Mark Francis. And I'm Alex Dennis. 19 years later, and the community still wonders where is Tabitha Tudor? The then 13 year old would now be 32 years old. This is a look at the age progression sketches released throughout the year, showing what she could look like today on the anniversary of her disappearance. I had the opportunity to sit down with her parents who believe that the person with answers is still in East Nashville. Rays of sunshine blanket the home on Lillian Street in East Nashville, just as it did 19 years ago when Deborah and Bo Tudors last saw their daughter Tabitha. Her face faded over time, but their memories of her as clear as the day she went missing. I'd be driving by myself and I could hear 
And then when I look in the passenger seat, I can see her sitting there just singing. 13-year-old Tabitha Tudors hasn't been seen since Tuesday morning. The story of 13-year-old Tabitha consumed the news. Just 98 pounds. She was last seen in 2003 walking to her bus stop at 14th and Boscobel. A classmate spotted her. He saw Tabitha walking down the hill and the red car made a U-turn and she was gone. Tabitha never made it to school, but it wasn't until the afternoon of April 29th when the punctual team didn't return home that Deborah realized something was terribly wrong. I never got a phone call. They had eight hours to get anywhere before I realized that my child was gone. The community came out in force. Questions swirled. Thinking of the bad things that could have been happening, it, it that drove me crazy. I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat because I, mm, I felt like I shouldn't because she wasn't. Is there a reason why you think we don't know where she is? Like I said earlier, that one part of the information that somebody out there knows and they're just not, they're not coming and telling. You think someone even in East Nashville? Yes. As time ticks on. The Tudor's family grows, yet her name remains a part of their daily conversation. They hold out hope. One day they will have answers. If we don't, we're still going to be with Tabitha again. She's going to be right there at those gates waiting on us when we come. Burned in their minds as their bright-eyed child, Tabitha would be 32 years old now. So 19 years ago, you told our news reporter, the more this goes on, the, the more, more your heart hurts. Yeah. My heart would continue to hurt if my baby comes home. How do you respond to that? I must have the big heart because it's still hurting. Well, the FBI is now offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to the recovery of Tabitha Tudors and the prosecution of the people or person responsible for her disappearance. If you have any information, please. You are asked to contact 1-800-CALL-FBI. Wow. <clears throat> Where are you, Tabitha? I just... This case... It's just really... It's just so concerning to me. And it's heartbreaking watching her parents talk about her. Because, I mean, I, I can't imagine I having I mean, a child I mean, on that long. I really felt like I was going to cry just listening to her mom when she said, well, she'll be waiting on us at the gates. Um, well, we know that she didn't just vanish. She could have gotten in somebody's car. She could have gotten in somebody's car. And, you know, what about the, the the strange business card? I just feel like these there's all these little clues. And so Ronald says, I was at a birthday party April 27th and overheard a conversation with people talking about going to Nashville and get Tabitha, including using a red car at the bus stop. Who Who was that? Who are those people? Do you live locally, Ronald? That's interesting. And this car, this red car, was um, that the neighborhood boy, it, that car was about 40 yards from where she was last seen. That's where she was saw getting into the car. And again, that the the tracking dogs, you know, it, they stopped at this alley. That's where she that's where that red car was seen. Was near that alley. But her friends say that she would never go down in that alley. So. It just I don't know. This case really confuses me, and <clears throat> I hope that they are still, you know, taking tips. I don't know if anybody has, 
I know there was a search that took place on six acres of a rugged plot, mostly wooded land. Um, there was an abandoned home, I think, that was dilapidated, uh, but they didn't find anything. It has been 20 years, y'all, and nothing. That's why I had to bring up how close the Cumberland River was. Because I, I have to keep an open mind about what the possibilities are in cases like this. When somebody isn't found, did they check in those other places? You know? He didn't say that, Joe. He just said it was a red car. That's the only information that I have on that car is that it was red and that the person had a baseball cap was African-American and between age 30 and 40 and was very similar matching the description in of the older sister who was an adult's former boyfriend. But it's also important to not lose hope and for these parents not to not lose hope because we have seen children recovered after 50 years of being missing. So they obviously think there's still a chance of her being alive. Otherwise, they wouldn't be spending the money on these age progressions. So, I mean, I, is it a likelihood that she's still alive? Well, probably not. But it's important not to lose that hope until we have evidence otherwise. Right. Now, I did see that in 2015, there was also a tip that was called into the cold case unit uh, that Tabitha Tudors may be in Nebraska. And Metro authorities passed that information on to law enforcement in Nebraska in a town called Fremont. And they had told officers to be on the lookout for a woman matching Tudor's age progress description in 2015. Um, and, of course, they put out some flyers around the town. And uh, the police department was told that she was staying at a large prominent church in the town located about a half an hour northwest of Omaha. And... They got the age progression flyers put out from the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church there in Fremont, Nebraska. Um, and they spoke with church staffers and everyone, but they didn't have anyone like that. Someone like, like Tabitha Tudor staying there. No one positively recognized the age progressed pictures at all. So... And then I think that Nashville tip, um, I'm trying to remember when the Nashville tip came in. Was it before or after that? I think it might have been before that. I hear a kitty kitty. Yes, he's being mouthy. He wants to talk to us. Trying to see if I can find out what date. Let's see. Yeah, basically that was the tip, the Indiana tip, the Nebraska tip. And that's about all that I have really seen and nothing has turned up yet. I mean, there's no physical evidence that they have been able to find. I know the cold case detective there, I think his name is Steve Jolly. He said he's left with no less than 10 possible suspects to investigate. And I think that was back in 2019 when he was <clears throat> you know, had given that statement to Fox 17 Nashville. Um, no crime scene, no physical evidence, 
no clear timetable, all fatal gaps. That's what Detective Steve Jolly said. Well, the thing that bothers me, besides the the boyfriend driving a red car and then the witness seeing her getting pulled into a red car, is the fact that Tennessee is a high trafficking area. And I think those sightings in Linton really need to be explored a lot more thoroughly. Because, much as I hate to say it, truckers have been known to be involved in trafficking. And if she was yes. seen with a truck driver, both, you know, with the trucker and at the hotel, that, that leads credence to that. And two different witnesses. Yeah. In two different places in the same town recognized her face. And so I have to wonder, what did Indiana do about that? It doesn't sound like they did anything. What, went out to the hotel and they were gone? So they're like, well, they're gone. <sighs> Ronald, do you know where the cistern was located? That's what Michelle wants to know. And then Ronald says he's talked to the detectives and gave them plenty of overwhelming information about this case. So, Ronald, you are local. Now, in this article that I have from Fox 17 in 2019, part of this statement on here says um, a man named Anthony was the last person to see Tabitha walking down Boscoble. See, that's the first time I've heard that name because, you know, they didn't give his name. And so... Fox 17 spoke with Anthony, who recalled seeing her with a piece of paper. He paid attention to Tabitha walking because of recent break-ins in the neighborhood. Because that's East Nashville, right? And it's not a good part of town. I've been there. I've been down that way. Ronald says it took Metro 77 days to finally assign detectives to the case of Tabitha. Wow. What address is this for? Hey, PJ. Thank you for being here. The other concerning thing was the amount of sex offenders in that area. Absolutely. That scared me. That scared me today. Yeah, see, special needs mom. She can confirm because I've been I've been to Nashville. And there's just places that you oh the cistern that they searched. Yeah. I feel like they should should have searched the river. And those warehouses and businesses down by the river. Because I just I just think that is important to clear all of those areas. Anthony said Tabitha was walking slowly, but even a person walking slowly could walk half a mile in the 15 minutes from the time Tabitha passed Anthony's house until the bus was supposed to arrive. If she was abducted by someone in a car, the kidnapper could have been as far as Dallas by the time her family realized she was missing. Absolutely. At the same time, I don't think that we should fault the school for not calling and letting them know that she was absent, though, because kids skip school all the time. It's something that happens on a regular basis. Hell, I did it when I was a kid, and I can't imagine the school trying to call my mom and dad every time I was gone from school. I used to just skip and go to the, to the little shack to get something to eat, and then I'd come back. But then the principal busted me one day. And I said, well, you can have my sausage biscuit. And he just laughed, and he said, don't make me call your mama. I said, oh, don't. You can call my daddy. Don't call my mama. 
call my I, dad. Don't call my mom. I, I had the same teacher for three hours in a row. I had her for debate. I had her for journalism and I had her for speech. And she told me, she's like, Thomas, I don't want you to show up for class unless you've got a test to take. I don't care what you do or where you go, but I don't want you in my classroom. So I would just check myself out of school for those three hours, not go do whatever. The band teacher didn't mind that I went to the little shack up the street to get something to eat, but the principal, he didn't like it because we weren't, we used to could leave for lunch, but then they changed it. And then I got in trouble. I said, please, don't. you can call my daddy. He won't yell at me, but my mama, she's fussy. She's still fussy. If you listen to this, mom, I love you. <laughs> but you're fussy. But you're a fussy woman. Now, I just saw another article that said that tip that was in about Nebraska, um, that it was a hoax. That's interesting. I just don't know. So Ronald, so you're so you're local there, I'm assuming. Can you tell me is Bailey Middle School closed permanently now? Is it a, is did they merge schools cuz I know recently where I live like they built a new middle school on a different property and they shut the other one down and now it's something else. So is Bailey Middle School still an active middle school there in that area or has it been shut down? It was an alternative school, PJ. Now I did find out. I just I just looked into the guy they were tr that was trying to lure the eleven year old. That his name was Martin Tim Boyd. That is the guy that who was arrested for trying to lure the eleven year old girl into his car four months after Tudor disappeared. But he was taken off the suspect list. And the gentleman that we talked about, Albert. Yeah, see, we I had people look into him, too. And he his his. Oh, my gracious. His record is horrible. Um, and he was right near that property, too. But I cannot find any any factual evidence that says that he was ever considered a suspect. Mentioning his name. That was the only guy that was investigated. So I wanted to make sure that I did say that. Hey, Dragon. Yes. Yes, Brenda. among other things. Be curious to know if he had owned a red car during that period of time. Yeah. You know, I think there's, you know, and there's, they've had tips, you know, according to this uh, article that I was just uh, reading here on my phone. Um, and, you know, another piece of information that we had talked about in our research group was the brother, the brother that he doesn't live in Nashville, but I know that he was looked into. He was, I think they polygraphed the parents, but he was never polygraphed. Um, because they said, well, he doesn't live in the area, so he likely had nothing to do with it. And I was like. Okay, um, what does that have to do with anything? What does where you live have anything to do with it? Would he have not known or could have possibly driven from another part of Tennessee to where his parents lived? I mean, that is where his parents lived. So I think because because Kevin is that was he's like 12 years older than her, the brother. Um, but all, all of those people were looked into 
and and I did understand that I think the sister, you know, was staying at the house with the parents, even though she was an adult. And that's why, you know, Tabitha would go in there and she would often sleep in her parents' room at night. You know, she'd make her a little pallet on the floor. And I think her sister was sleeping in her room. It's such a curious case. Does anybody have any questions or anything that they, you know, want to add to this case? I appreciate you being here, Ronald, and giving us some information. Hey, Spectral Whispers, thank you for being here. Glad to see you. So I'm going to put up her flyer again so we can take a look at this is a flyer that I actually made for her. Tabitha Tudor missing since April 29th of 2003 from Nashville, Tennessee. She is on the FBI endangered missing list. She's been featured on um, America's Most Wanted. She has been missing for 20 years. She was born February 15th of 1990, in which she will be 33 years old this year. She is a white female. At the time, she was five feet, one inches tall, uh, weighed 100 pounds. She has blue eyes and sandy blonde hair. Both ears are pierced. She has a scar on her finger and a birthmark on her stomach. And the FBI is offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to the recovery of Tabitha Tudors and the prosecution of the person responsible for her disappearance. And it does say that you, if you have any information or a tip, please contact your local FBI office or the nearest American consulate. Do you have anything that you want to add to this case, Arctic? I just, I know that we get a lot of people watch from Tennessee. Um, Ronald, for instance, and I know he's called with what he knows, but anyone out there that may know something related to this case, don't be afraid to make that phone call. If you see something, say something. Because your phone call, what you know, could make a difference and it could bring Tabitha Tudor's home safe or at least give this family some closure if you have any information about what has happened. And guys, don't forget to smash the like and share this video out because this will give an opportunity for more people to watch this video and find out the story of the disappearance of Tabitha Tudor's and Maybe they'll be able to share it on their social media platform and maybe someone will see her face and remember some information and they can call in to the FBI office and, you know, give an anonymous tip. You don't have to necessarily give your name, but I'm sure if you want to collect the $50,000, you'll probably have to give them some information. Yeah. <laughs> um. Aurora, sometimes they do have rewards like this for missing people, especially if they are on their most wanted list. And that is actually uh, what Tabitha is listed on. And I will show that again. She is listed on the most wanted of missing and kidnapped persons list uh, for the, the, uh, the national, you know, for the whole FBI, the main, the mainstay. Um, and this is a picture, and here is her uh, FBI poster, and it has all of her information on this website, and it just asks to call the local FBI office or the American Embassy or consulate if you have any information. Now, the local FBI office in Tennessee would be Memphis. So if you're in Tennessee and you have a tip and you want to reach out, contact FBI Memphis. 
and you can go to their website and it will tell you exactly how to leave a tip and what is required to do that. And she is considered, you know, critically endangered missing. What was once thought to be um, a runaway, they now realize it's not a runaway situation at all. And I just feel like it's just so unfortunate. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart to see the, the parents. Yeah. And yeah. unfortunately, we see it way too often where they just stamp these kids runaways and, oh, they'll be back. Wait 48 hours. We'll take a missing persons report on them. And then here we are 20 years later. And the moderators are dropping some some crucial information. There is some really good articles that are out there. Um, you can also look at the Charlie Project, which has all of the information that we have discussed here. The information that we have discussed is exactly what has been released by the Charlie Project and um, information that is linked to the FBI. So if you want to click on those links and you know, go over there and save the poster so that you can circulate that. You can also find this missing poster here on screen um, on my Twitter page and on my Facebook page, as well as my community wall on YouTube. So please feel free to share this poster out and let's keep Tabitha Tudor circulating around social media because she has not been found. Absolutely. And share her poster in all 50 states, guys. We have no clue where she is. There's a good likelihood that she's not in Tennessee anymore. So the more states that see her flyer, the better. Aurora, they know what their guidelines are, and they really don't have any evidence. So they still think there's a chance that she could be alive. We've seen it happen, haven't we, Artie? People have yes, been missing for 20-some years, and they be found alive. It can happen. And we hope for the best. I don't really know what the outcome in this case will be, but we're going to pray for Bo and Deborah Tudors uh, that they will be able to find answers in their daughter's case. Um, so please share this video out. Please like this video and help this video get into the algorithm so that more people can see Tabitha's face and check in, look at, into this case and familiarize themselves with the information so that if there is something that somebody sees, maybe they'll be willing to come forward. Maybe they've been hesitant all of these years to speak on this. And maybe they feel now they're ready to come forward. And we encourage people, if you see something, say something. Because you could save somebody's life. Did you see the heartbreak on these parents' face? It, it's just devastating. So I want to thank everyone for being here tonight and taking the time to hear about Tabitha Tudors. I'm going to be live later this week. We're going to be talking about another case, Khaleesi Cuthbert. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that case um, out of Waynes, um, Waynesboro, Virginia, I believe that is. Um, I'm going to have a special guest on panel that is a local in the area, and she is going to talk to us um, about Khaleesi's missing case and um, all the things that she is doing on Facebook in her group in order to keep Khaleesi's face out there. Uh, there were people arrested in that case, and um, but Khaleesi has never been found. And we want to be able to continue to keep some of these cold cases out there as much as possible. So if you have a case that you want me to cover and you want to see it on this channel, email me at duchessforthemissing at gmail.com or you can reach out to me on Facebook Messenger and let me know that there's a case that you would like for me to talk about on this channel um, and I'm happy to do it. Just please reach out to me and let me know. Send me any information that you have. And I'm always happy to cover um, any case 
that you guys have because it's about the missing guys. It's about the missing. It's about keeping their faces out there because we have to give them hope. We have to be a voice for the voiceless. Casper says, baby Joe Clyde Daniels still hasn't been found either. Please cover this. Casper, I will send me any information that you have on Joe Clyde Daniels. I, I do know about that case, but I'm not up to date on all the things. So I'll have my research researchers. I know y'all are in this in the chat uh, right now. We just did a deep dive on his case over on my channel and I'll send the yeah. video to Discord. Well, yes. Yeah. Excellent. I'm gonna have to go watch it. I'm going to have to go learn all the things about, about Joe Clyde Daniel, but I do remember him going missing at me and um, another girl that, um, that I'm, I'm friends with. We we've talked about that case a little bit because I think that was close to her. So um, I will definitely do that. I'll, I'll work on that and we'll, We'll feature that coming up, Casper Friendly. Thank you. Thank you for recommending that. And like I said, guys, you can reach out to me. So, um, and I'm on Twitter. If you guys are on Twitter, I'm at Dutch for Missing. And I'm on Facebook under Dutch's Discussions. So if you want to tweet me or if you want to hit me up on Facebook Messenger, you know, you can do that. Or you can email me at Duchess number four, the missing at gmail.com. Thank you, Nightbot for dropping that, you can just send me an email. And I really appreciate all of you being here. Thank you so much, Arctic, for being my guest to discuss this case. And thank you, moderators, for being here um, to help the chat. And I appreciate everyone being here to listen to this case. Uh, Casper, my channel is Arctic Fox True Crime. At, uh, yeah, Arctic Fox True Crime. And we can have the mods to drop that. Nightbot, you're busy. You're doing all the things. Nightbot's on it. So um, I hope everyone has a wonderful Monday evening. I'm going to go have dinner uh, with my hubby and uh, read up on some more cases. And I've got another live that I've got to schedule on Khaleesi, which will be for Thursday at six o'clock, because that's what time works for my special guest that's going to be coming up to talk to us. And uh, we're also going to be doing um, a live coming up to talk about the case of missing Brandon Abbott. And I'm still researching a couple of things and I'm looking for a time when I'm going to be able to schedule that. I have family coming in town this weekend to visit me. So it will not be this weekend, but I may can squeeze it in on Friday evening. So we will, um, we're going to tentatively see, I'm going to try to work it out and see if we can shoot for a stream on Friday evening. I'm still uh, working on some research and talking to some people on that case, but um, I will look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday to get all the updates about missing Khaleesi Cuthbert. And I hope to see you all here. So again, thank you all for being here. Please don't forget to smash the like and share this out. And I hope everyone has a great evening. Thank you so much for being here, Arctic. And I will see you around the YouTube streets. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Have a good night. Night. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for sticking it out to the end for hearing about this case. Um, enjoy your evening, enjoy your evening, and I will catch you guys in the YouTube streets, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye, y'all. Today is episode two in Cold Cases and Unsolved in the Carolina.